What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talk of Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and today we're going to be doing a full game preview on the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the New York Jets, and we're going to talk about anything and everything under the sun, so strap in. It might be a little bit of a longer video, but before we hop into the video, guys, I do want to keep you guys updated. I am in Florida, for those of you who are unaware, and we are currently being hit by Hurricane Ian, so I am recording a lot of videos in batches, and the idea here is just to make sure that you guys get your daily dose of New York Jets content from Talking Jets with Tigo and that's really it. So if there are any big news, I'm going to try to keep them on my handy dandy notebook and uh, I'll talk about them uh, after Hurricane Ian and we're all settled and we have power back if we lose power or anything like that and I'll do it in a live stream and we can talk about the hurricane, we can talk about the game, we can talk about whatever it is. I don't know what to expect with this hurricane. It's been a long time since there's been a Category 5 hurricane that's going to hit Central Florida but we're prepared, we're ready and let's just hop right into the game preview. So we're going to start with the Steelers, and then we're going to move on to the New York Jets. So let's do that. Specifically, I wanted to talk about first is uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, which is just not good. Uh, when you're looking at this defense in just total uh, amount of yards and everything like that, Pittsburgh is ranked 24th amongst all teams when it comes to total yards per game allowed on average. Right now, they are allowing 394.7 yards per game. That is absolutely atrocious. For context, the New York Jets are 15th with 336.3. They're, they're not effectively stopping teams um, at all. And we'll talk about more about that in a little bit about specifically with rushing and passing when we get to those areas. But I think the biggest thing about this defense and why I'm not necessarily worried about this defense is the fact that the two biggest players for the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, all pros, Pro Bowl players, like arguably best in their position players are both going to be out. TJ Watt is out with an injury and Minka Fitzpatrick is looking and trending like he is not going to play against the New York Jets because of a concussion. Those are the only two players on that defense that truly strike fear into my bones because TJ Watt, no matter what he is doing, disrupts games and Minka Fitzpatrick, no matter what I say to annoy my friends who are Pittsburgh Steelers fans, he just shuts me up every single time. He is all over the field and going up until week three, amongst 76 graded safeties, Minka Fitzpatrick, according to PFF, is ranked number two. He has been everywhere with interceptions and pass breakups and coverage. The guy has been legit. But with him out and TJ Watt out, this defense becomes really not scary. A defense that was already struggling, I expect, is going to struggle even more. The New York Jets should be able to bully this defense in Pittsburgh. That being said, let's talk about specific areas where we can bully this defense. Uh, with Mika Fitzpatrick out the entire secondary, the back seven becomes really, really suspect. Um, Sutton and Witherspoon, Sutton's actually a pretty good corner, but he's not, in my opinion, as good as our wide receivers are. When it comes to him being a corner, he is not a, a good enough corner to cover how good our wide receivers are. Garrett Wilson is legit. Elijah Moore is legit. Corey Davis can be disruptive. Braxton Berrios is slippery and hard to stay connected to. Brees Hall and Michael Carter are not easy to cover when they're coming out of the backfield. Take advantage of the fact that Witherspoon is a below average corner, Sutton is an average corner, Edmonds is an average safety, and they're going to be playing their backup free safety. I don't know who that is to be able to say specifically by name, so I can't really talk about his specific play, but when you're looking at those guys that are in the secondary, we should be able to bully them. Now let's talk specifically about the linebacker room in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh spent a lot of money this offseason to bring in Miles Jack to partner with Devin Bush and elevate that whole linebacker room. And while I really like what Mike, uh, with, with what Flores is doing, not Mike, um, with what Flores is doing in that linebacker room, it's not enough. The linebackers are playing at an average level. Bush is playing really badly. 
and it can't be all on Miles Jack. So we should be able to attack every area of the field with our wide receivers and our tight ends, which have to be involved more in this game. Um, and then let's talk about this defensive line. Outside of Cam Hayward, they do not have an elite player on this defensive line. And Cam Hayward, while he is great, and I love Cam Hayward, he is 33 and a half years old. He will be 34 by the end of the season. I believe in Elijah Vera Tucker to be able to take up Cam Hayward straight up one-on-one. -on -one. We don't need to be double-teaming Cam Hayward. Elijah Vera Tucker, amongst all graded guards, is the eighth best guard in football, according to PFF. He should be able to take the 25th ranked interior defensive lineman in Cam Hayward. Um, and if not, Max Mitchell is performing adequately. Connor McGovern is being performing adequately. We have the players to be able to neutralize this defensive line. Now, if you watch my five keys to victory, which will be coming out tomorrow, you'll see what I think we need to do on the left side of the offensive line to help prevent a player like Highsmith from being destructive because Alex Highsmith is a, a he's looking like he can be a good edge rusher in this league and an outside linebacker in this league, but he shouldn't be able to disrupt this offensive line and this uh, and, and our offense at all by himself. He needs help. Ogan Joby isn't performing that well. Hayward isn't breaking the world because it's hard to do things by yourself. We talk about Quinn and Williams. Now he hasn't had help on our defensive side of the ball. Cam Hayward just lost the biggest like asset in football in TJ Watt. Not just, but he lost him uh, a week ago. Oh, two weeks ago, I'm sorry. You know, it's hard to perform when the focus is entirely on you. So, and it leads to the other stats. I forgot to mention it when it comes to the passing yards. And in the secondary, uh, uh, Pittsburgh is ranked 22nd when it comes to passing yards allowed per game. Um, at 252, the New York Jets are at 16th with 231. We should be able to take advantage of this secondary. But we're talking about the defensive line. Let's talk about the rushing defense um, for Pittsburgh. It's not there. They're not stopping the run effectively. You spent all of this draft capital to go and get Brees Hall. Take advantage of the fact that Pittsburgh is ranked 28th in rushing yards allowed per game at 142.7 yards allowed per game. They're not stopping the run effectively. For context, the New York Jets are 14th with 105.3 yards per game. So, like, again... The Jets right now are an average defense facing a below average defense in Pittsburgh. They have lost a lot of key players. We should be able to go out there and bully this defense. Now, let's talk about the offensive side of the ball. Let's talk about these teams and what they're being able or what they're not being able to do um, with, the, with the football. So let's start. I think the conversation has to start and end with Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky is not playing well. When you're looking at uh, net yards per passing play, Mitchell Trubisky is ranked 29th with 5.1 average yards per passing play. If you continue that stat with average yards per pass thrown, he is ranked, let me find him, 32nd with an average yards per pass thrown at 5.5. It's not good. And when we look at, just to throw it in there, put some more salt in the room, uh, salt in the wound, uh, at QB rating, Mitchell Trubisky is ranked 29th with a 77.7 .7 average QBR. Mitchell Trubisky is not performing well in Matt Canada's offensive play scheme. And a lot of the blame can be blamed, can be placed on Matt Canada. He is not calling a dynamic or good offensive playbook. It is really, really like it's almost like he's trying to shelter Mitchell Trubisky, which I would get if it was Kenny Pickett there, but it's not. It's Mitchell Trubisky. He's a guy who's been in the league for a long time. He's been to the playoffs. You shouldn't have to shelter him as much as Matt Canada is. So I don't know who's to blame more, Mitchell Trubisky's talent or ability, or if it's Matt Canada coming from college and trying to run a college offense or whatever it is in the NFL. Whatever it is, Mitchell Trubisky isn't being effective at all. And we should take advantage of the fact that we have really, really good corners 
And if our linebackers can step up and play and cover these wide receivers, we can do that. While we're on the topic of wide receivers and while we're on the topic of Pittsburgh Steelers wide receivers, Pittsburgh has some solid wide receivers. Um, Deontay Johnson, Kenny Pick, uh, Kenny Pickens, um, George Pickens, and Chase Claypool are a solid one, two, three. Now, while none of them are performing at a super high level, uh, not named Deontay Johnson, I believe in our secondary to be able to cover Deontay Johnson. You put DJ Reed on Deontay Johnson all game. You put Sauce Gardner on Deontay Johnson all game, and you can remove him from the game entirely. I really believe in our secondary to be able to do that. And while Pickens is showing flashes and signs of being a really, really good wide receiver, it's just they're not getting the ball to him enough because, again, they're not testing the deep parts of the field to be able to take advantage of a George Pickens and a Chase Claypool and what their skill set provides. They are speed receivers, and they are aggressive, deep, and they're not taking advantage of that because... They're not, I, I don't know if they don't trust their offensive line. I, I don't know what it is because according to most measurable statistics, the offensive line is performing pretty adequately in Pittsburgh. They're not great, but they're performing adequately. So I don't know what's happening with Mitchell Trubisky and this offense that they're not getting effective. The other thing that we need to look at with this offense from Pittsburgh is that Najee Harris behind this offensive line seems to have like lost a step or something. I don't know what's going on, but he's just not breaking games like he was before. Uh, to put it into perspective, when it comes to total rushing yards per game, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers are ranked 23rd with an average of 90 rushing yards per game, which is very unlike what we saw from last year. Last year, they had a far worse offensive line, and Najee Harris by himself was rushing for 90-plus yards. In the first three weeks, to see Najee Harris almost not rush the ball effectively, it's surprising. We need to keep that up. The New York Jets are doing an effective job stopping the run. Let's make sure that we continue to do that and we stop Najee Harris. Um, and then I think the biggest thing with this team is that we're looking at a defense, or not a defense, we're looking at a team that might have a divided locker room. Uh, we know that the fan base is already split Um not probably split. They've already given up on their offensive coordinator and their quarterback. If the New York Jets can come into Pittsburgh and we can start getting Kenny Chance and we can get this stadium loud and, and just obnoxious and just mad at Mitchell Trubisky and drive the division in the locker room from who's under center even more, that can spill out onto the field. Players might stop trying because of who's under quarterback. The New York Jets need to force the issue, force the fact that there is a quarterback controversy in Pittsburgh for the first time in like 15 years. If we can force that issue by our defense playing well and our offense playing well and getting ahead in this game early, we should be able to walk away with the win. Let's talk about some real quick because I talked about it when we were talking about it. Specific New York Jets things that we can do. Uh, we need better safety play. Uh, this wide receiver room in Pittsburgh, while isn't you know a bunch of world beaters, is dynamic and scary enough that we should be worried about the performance that we're getting out of Jordan Whitehead and Lamarcus Joyner. We need to be able to help our safeties more. Lamarcus Joyner shouldn't play at all. We should replace him. Put Will Parks in. We need to do it. Um, Quinn and Williams is ranked eighth amongst all defensive interior uh, linemen. He should be able to disrupt the middle of this offensive line uh, a lot, and we should see big jumps from Carl Lawson, Jonathan Franklin Miles, Sheldon Rankins, who actually is performing adequately. You know, we've got a lot of players on this defensive line that are being disruptive, that are performing adequately, but we need to level up and we need to start getting sacks. That's what's important right now. That's what we need to see from our guys. And honestly, we should start. Um, Bryce Huff. We need to sit one of the interior guys. If it was me, I would probably bench Solomon Thomas. It's time to hold him, him accountable, and I believed in Solomon Thomas going in, um, and we should bring in the extra edge rusher in Bryce Huff to really help with this team who I think is going to be passing the ball a lot. And let's talk on the offensive side of the ball. 
Uh, Zach Wilson is going to be back under center. That's awesome. We need to protect the left side of the offensive line. Give Zach Wilson time. Let's not force the issue with the knee. Um, let's not have Zach Wilson run around and be, you know, running around like, like a chicken with his head cut off. Let's protect the kid. We know that the right side of the offensive line is performing well. Um, so let's keep doing that, and I think the best way for us to do that is for us to get the tight ends involved. 12 personnel as much as we can, uh, and let's just have Elijah Moore and, Cor uh, and Garrett Wilson on the outside with Brees Hall or Michael Carter in the backfield. Uh, these guys are playing really, really well. Michael Carter is 19th amongst uh, all graded uh, running backs right now, uh, which is absolutely spectacular. And Brees Hall uh, is ranked uh, 39th amongst all uh, running backs graded, which isn't as good, but I think that's because he's dropping. He's dropped a couple of passes, which is bringing his total down guys let me know what you guys think about the game preview is there anything that i missed is there anything that i didn't talk about is there anything that i over exaggerated under exaggerated overplayed underplayed let me know in the comment section below and last but not least go jets before i end the video sorry my prediction i think we're gonna get a relatively low scoring game i expect 17 or 20 points out of the new york jets and this offense but i expect our defense to be able to hold the pittsburgh steelers to uh, 13 to 16 points if i had to guess i'm probably going to say that the game ends 17 to 13 new york jets walking away with a win that's it for me guys thanks for stopping by thanks for hitting the subscribe button thanks for hitting the like button and last but not least go jets